Okay, we're ready to add a light. Um, so let's start with the easy things. Um, we're going to add some sliders to add our position of our light just so we can control it and see what's going on. And so here I am in my HTML file, and I've added three sliders for my X, Y, and Z so that I can see where my light is at. And then in my JavaScript file, just as we've done for other sliders, uh, I've added some lines to control the sliders, and I've created a variable to hold the light position, uh, just like I do for all my user interface elements. And then what am I actually doing? OK, I'm just setting the x, y, and z positions based on the value uh, of the slider, and then re-rendering, of course. So what does this get me so far? It sets me a global variable. So we want to be able to see what we're doing with this global variable. So down in render all shapes, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw the light. So I'm just going to make a new cube for my light. I'm going to set the color to yellow. Um, here I've set it to be extra bright yellow. What does that mean? My color is past one. That's craziness. Uh, it gets clamped to one anyway. I did this because my cube has this fake lighting on it that makes things darker, and I just want that thing to be bright yellow. So I put my numbers really, really high. But this you could think of as one one zero for a yellow color. Um, and then I'm going to translate into the position where my light is. And I've got some scaling, and then I have to make my, my cube is 0 to 1. So I want it to be negative 0.5 to negative 0.5, that kind of thing. So I'm just setting up my position. So let's go see how that works. So I can move my light around, and I can see it. So I just have a little indicator. There's no lights yet. I haven't made it actually do anything. I've just put a cube that's on a, it's on a slider. So you've done this already many times. But this is going to be my light position uh, in, in the world. So, of course, the next thing we have to do is to be able to pass this light into our shader. And just like we pass all of our variables, I'm putting it in a uniform. Here's my U light position, and I'm passing uh, this JavaScript global light position into this U light position. So let's go see what that looks like in the shader itself. So I'm up here in my, uh, where am I using my light position? I'm using it in my fragment shader. So I have a new uniform light position. And um, of course, just like all uni uniform variables in my fragment shader, I had to add it to my connecting variables to GLSL. So somewhere in here, there's my U light position. I've now connected that up to a to a variable in JavaScript, so that I so that I'm connected. So now, in theory, I'm passing my value in here. So I can't see anything yet because we haven't talked about actually making any use of of this variable yet. So we're going to have to actually do something so that we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do in order to make it so that I can see is I'm just going to temporarily do a calculation that says, is my surface within one unit of my light? And if it is, turn everything red just so I can see what's, what's going on. So um, I'm going to have to do a couple of different things. One, I'm going to have to get the vertex position. And I don't want the position where it's going to render on the screen. I want the position in global coordinates. So I've made a new varying variable here in my vertex shader called vertex position. And I'm multipl multiplying my A position. This is my raw coordinate that's getting passed in right? when I pass my buffer in. And normally, I'm multiplying times the model view matrix, times the view matrix, times the projection matrix. I still have this rotation matrix in here. Um, and I, I don't want all the viewing and projection, and this global is really acting like a camera, moving, this rotate is acting like a camera moving me around. I just want the model view, just the part that sort of moved my sphere down and over to here, just the part that's doing the animation on the cube. So I want to multiply my point times just the model matrix, and that's going to give me the position of this vertex in world coordinates. Okay, so this is going to be in world coordinates. So now we have the same thing declared down here in our fragment shader, and we can get to it. And we know where the light position was in world coordinates. So now we can subtract those two things. So um, I have this if statement that's deciding, do I want to have normal colored or colors or textures or what I want to have? Yours might look a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what my light vector is. And so what's my light vector? It's the vector from the light position to the vertex position. I have to be a little bit careful about the ordering of these. Actually, I probably want it the other way. But right now, I'm only going to use the distance. So it doesn't matter yet. And then based on this light vector, so this is, was in world coordinates. This was in world coordinates. Um, based on 
the distance between these things, which I'm going to get with the length function, so I have that in this r radius, um, based on this length, I'm going to set up some if. So I'm going to say, if my distance is less than 1, just set the color of this fragment to red. And if my distance is less than 2, then let's just set the color of this fragment to green. And now we can see what's going to happen if we, if we do this. So we've passed in our light position. And if everything is working correctly, uh, which mine wasn't first, don't, don't be thinking that I, I had this all working immediately. This is an hour of debugging later with minor bugs about what are, what are you calling wrong and doing wrong, VEC3, VEC4, all this kind of stuff. Um, we should see something. So let's re reload this page. OK. So what does our shader say? Our shader says, if you're within one unit, then color it red. If you're within two units, color it green. Else just leave whatever color we, we were calculating. So now when we move our light around, it behaves in the way that we might think. So let's, let's stick our light all the way over here in the corner and just see if it's doing something that's roughly what we think. I'm going I'm to look around at a different angle here. Um, so here's my light up in the corner, and when I move it in my Z direction, I move up, move along. And my box is two and a half units, so we can see that the diameter of this sphere is two units, and here's my extra half a unit. Seems like it's approximately the right thing uh, that's, that's happening here uh, in terms of the distances for, for these things going on. So it seems like I might be calculating things in the right way. Um, it's, it's very difficult to visualize what's happening in the shader. You do your calculations and you don't know what's going on. But it seems like I can move my light position around and, and get it to interact with all my objects. If I move my, my down, down here, it'll interact also with these objects. So it seems like I've got a light that I can move around in my world and we're done with this point. 